What is up, everybody? Chris Chavez here with Fandroid.com. You're watching the Android Overload for Friday, February 15th. And these are your top Android news stories. There's only a few short days left until the HTC M7 is finally revealed. And it looks like we have one more leak before it's announced. The folks at Unwired View slash EV Links have actually gotten their hands on a photo of the black version of the device. It looks fairly good. I mean, it looks like it's made out of some type of aluminum along the top and bottom, and uh, people are saying it looks a lot like the BlackBerry Z10. I guess I kind of see it, but there's only so much you can do with a rectangle. And no, at HTC, they have really good designers, so we have to look at it from the sides and the back before we can make any... Uh, type of conclusion but from the front it looks awesome and it's black and as Wesley Snipes has taught us uh, in Passenger 57 you always bet on black. After successfully being funded on Kickstarter it looks like the Play Jam Game Stick is now officially up for pre-order. Pricing starts at $79 and you get the USB stick which is basically like the Android gaming console uh, you plug that into your TV and then it comes with the Bluetooth controller to do gaming from basically anywhere you can plug into. PlayJam is also offering a $25 dock and a $10 case for the game stick. And at $80, it looks like it will be going head to head with the Ouya. And while I'm not too sure on the longevity of these Android uh, gaming consoles, I feel like if anybody has a shot right now, it's probably the Ouya. Now I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on all these little Android mini consoles. Do you see yourself purchasing one for, you know, a loved one or maybe for yourself? Or do you think they're kind of pointless? I know people make the argument a lot that you can just plug in uh, using HDMI your smartphone into a TV, but then you can't actually use your smartphone for anything and it starts killing battery. I feel like that's more or less used like in a tight pinch. Maybe when you're someplace and you're just losing your mind with boredom. A mysterious benchmark popped up on Nina Mark's site the other day. It's a Samsung device going by the model number SCHI545. A combination of the benchmark scores along with the resolution or reported resolution of the device is leading some to believe that this could be Verizon's Galaxy S4. With an unveiling shortly after Mobile World Congress, uh, we have no reason to believe it's anything but this. But for some weird reason, the Ninamark bench score is showing that it's coming with a Qualcomm S4 Pro processor. Now, as you guys may have heard, if you've been listening to rumors, uh, the Galaxy S4 will come with one of Samsung's Exynos Octo cores, which honestly just sounds absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> if it uh, helps, Instagram load up a millisecond quicker, I guess I'm for it. The boys at Canonical, makers of Ubuntu Touch Mobile OS, announced today that the Ubuntu Touch developer preview will be uh, made available on February 21st. And while I know this isn't exactly Android, directly Android related, they also announced that it will be compatible with the Nexus 4. Previously, we saw the Ubuntu Touch OS running on the Galaxy Nexus, and quite honestly, it ran like crap. As direct competition to Android, I feel like uh, the more open OS is the better. Android has long surpassed iOS, so now we need something else to kind of uh, challenge the guys at Google, keep them on their toes, so to speak. And if you've seen this Ubuntu smartphone OS, it actually looks pretty cool. They use a lot of weird gestures and stuff. If nothing else, I feel like someone should make an Android launcher uh, using some of these cool little features. Today, Google developers posted on their Google Plus page some of the results from the hackathon they had for the Google Glass, uh, what they were calling the Google Glass Foundry. Google has been pretty secretive about what's been going on during these hackathons, but they did announce that all these developers putting their uh, big old brains together uh, managed to come up with 80 new ways of using Google Glass. And while teaming up, I, apparently eight teams of these developers were actually able to get early prototypes of the Google Glass for absolutely free. Google was more than happy to give developers these early prototypes fronting the $1,500 per unit tab. Google did mention that there could be more Google Glass foundries in the future and where Fandroid did actually sign up for three Google Glass headsets. Unfortunately, our developer Steven had triplets and couldn't make it to the events. Boo for triplets. All right, so that just about wraps up the Android Overload for Friday, February 15th. For links to all the articles I talked about in this video, make sure you hit the description area down below. As always, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. With Fandra.com, I'm Chris Chavez. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys on Monday.